Hello everyone, as promised, the sewing theme journals are done and ready, and I will be doing a flip through of them today. These will all be listed in my Etsy shop tonight at nine o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Today is December the 10th. <laughs> I think it's the 10th, let me check. No, it is Friday, December 9th. I am so sorry. I had to look at the calendar. It's one of those weeks where I just don't know what day it is. <laughs> so these are all going to be in my shop, like I said, tonight at nine. And I will do a flip through with talking of the first one and then timestamp the rest of them and set them to music. They're all pretty much the same. I like to say each one of my journals does have its own personality and that's part of why I named them names. Um, but um, for the most part, they're all pretty much the same. Even the ones that are, there are a couple of them that are a little less colorful on the outside than the others, but I've tried to bring a lot of color into the inside, uh, although they're probably not quite as vibrant as the others. So we will start with the first one, which is Simplicity number 6234. This is a pattern for a blouse, a jacket, or a coat and trousers from 1974. This one is named the Daisy. And I usually name them, um, honestly, I, I look at this, the girl in the center, if there's a group of three, and I just pick the name that I think she most looks like. And so I thought she looked like a Daisy. It is tied with the Grogane ribbon. Each one of them is tied with something different. Um, it measures eight and a half tall by five and a half wide. It's a single signature and it's pretty chunky. So you can see it's about two and a half inches wide right here, um, but the ribbon helps hold it closed nicely. I just wrapped the sewing pattern all around. These are a little more substantial than my other ones that I've made. Um, they, I'm using the same cardstock as the base, but instead of just putting sewing pattern instructions inside or uh, printer paper, I used another sheet of cardstock and sewed those together. So they're a little more rigid than in the past. And also, I believe there is a little bit more embellishments and ephemera and tags than in the past. Um, I tried to make these a little bit uh, more I guess fancy than the ones that I've made in the past just in case anyone wanted to get them as a gift it would be brimming with beautiful sewing themed ephemera and whatnot so let's go ahead and flip through this one um, this is a book page pocket I made with a sewing uh, three ring binder and just stuck you paused a little bit here and then we have a journaling card and then a little tag made out of sewing pattern tissue and a sewing pattern model with some chunky yarn. All of them have a little doily here glued to this very front page. And then here's the instructions for this pattern. I believe three of the patterns had the, uh, the original instructions still included, but the other ones did not. So I ended up choosing other parts of sewing pattern instructions to put in those. This is some Kool-Aid dyed paper that I got from Angela at To Restore You. Thank you, Angela. And this is some acrylic braid paper. And I just stapled a little thread printable here. Here's a fabric pocket with a order form, the little sheet for the uh, transfer, and then a little model, another little sewing model that I found at the Graphics Ferry. I will try to list all of the digitals um, below in this video as well as in my Etsy listings. This is from a Better Homes and Gardens sewing book and I have a fabric tab. Uh, this is from, I believe, uh, I don't remember the name of the Etsy shop. I want to say it's, the name of the uh, group is called So Cute, S-E-W, but I will have to link her shop below, but I love her images. And then we have a doily here and some graph paper or engineering paper. And then I did a little fabric cluster. I made a tuck spot out of a book page. And then we have a little 
graphic. I believe this is from KB and Friends. And then I did a little sewing pattern girl again on a little bookmark type piece. Here is some of my handmade uh, aged scotch tape, fabric ruffle. There's a flip for journaling. And then in here we have a very, very old notepad sheet that I've just decoupaged a little bit and a little fabric tag and a digital from KB and Friends. Here's a belly band made from a master board that I made that's, you know, mostly sewing themed items. And then this is a, a public domain scan of a newspaper out of Australia selling patterns. And I have just printed it and then aged it uh, with ink and folding and ripping and things like that. If you want to see how to age paper and do it so that it looks really, really, um, accurate, please watch Diane Shaw at uh, My Old Barn Door, I believe it is, Di Shawcraft One on, on YouTube, and she has an Etsy store called My Old Barn Door, but she has an excellent video about how to age paper. What I normally like to do, but I'm out of it, I like to also print this on like off-white paper to keep that aged look, but I had to use white paper this time. I tried to use only what I had in my house to make these. Uh, did not buy anything extra. So I'm very proud of myself that these are truly recycled ha using what I have in my house journals. <laughs> Isn't this great? Do you remember these toilet seat covers? This is from Wart Basket. And then here I've just put a vintage button card and then I have made a little sew sewn collage journaling card. Here's some more Kool-Aid dyed paper. A vintage greeting card. All of them have one of these. There's some tracing paper. A little sale tag that I've put on with a brad. Stapled on a little thread image, thread cap image. This is another sewing pattern piece. Here's a double pocket here and we have a little collage journaling card made from that master board. Some Play Money a book page tag with an apron graphic. And then all four of them have just a little decorated sheet of somewhat stationary type paper to journal on. And all of them in the center have a page from a how to knit book. And I've made little tiny pockets. And then we have some more journaling cards. And then we have a layaway ticket here. And this is something that I sort of had the idea to do uh, while I was trying to go to sleep one night. And I really liked the way it turned out. So my mom said that there used to be Singer sewing machine stores in the malls. And one of the things they would have is a little sample stitch uh, card beside each machine to show you what all of the stitches look like if you were to purchase that machine. So I kind of recreated that in my own way using just a few of the decorative stitches that my machine had and then did a little fake model number and date. I think part of the fun of making junk journals is making imaginary content to go in it. Almost like making play food to go in a dollhouse. That's kind of what it reminds me of. Um, in the middle, we have some buttons sewn onto the string. Not sewn, tied. <laughs> and then here's a playing card that has like a quilted motif on it. And then two more, more journaling cards. I tried to have a lot of space for writing in these. Here is a vintage pack of sewing machine, or not sewing machine. These look like cruel needles. And then a little um, journaling card under here. And all of the paper clips that I've used, I've attached ribbon or trim or rick rack or something to the top. Here's a little envelope. It is empty, but it's just a little embellished coin envelope. I thought it would look cool to look like an envelope where you would purchase buttons, maybe bulk buttons in a store. And then here is another fabric cluster. 
This is a digital from Molly's Mantle. This is one of her scanned bed sheets. Love it so much. And I have put, well, I've tried to put one of these in each of the journals or, or if not the bed sheet, then at least a digital from her shop. Here's a fabric pocket. And then we have a journaling card, one of my end cut Frankenstein cards, and then some beautiful fabric that my mom gave me with sewing pattern ladies on it. And I've turned that into a tag. I just glued down this little paper sack and then inside I've done a little flip notepad. I've got one of these inside of all five of the journals as well. Here's an up tuck pocket and then just, a, just some more journaling cards. And then these, I'm sure you saw me use these in my other journals. These are just fabric swatch cards that my husband designed. And then instead of handwriting it, I used my typewriter this time to put some info about the fabric. Made up, of course, because that's more fun. Okay, that is the first one. That is the daisy. Uh, for the next few, I will be putting the name of each journal on the screen and flipping through them without words. And so if you're interested in any of these, again, they'll be in my shop tonight, Friday, December night at nine o'clock. Thanks for watching so much. And I hope all of you have a lovely weekend.